a few videos ago, I talked about a few of the apps I was looking at on Linux for photo editing, and some of those were GIMP and Darktable, as well as uh, Krita. People were mentioning Krita. So I looked at all these things and played around with them. And I want to give you an update. But first, let's review the sp photo specific areas that I needed to uh, think about when choosing a tool or looking for a tool. And basically, the big one that I was kind of worried about or curious how I was going to tackle was what was the tool I was going to use to organize a decent sized library, thousands of photos, and so I can be able to filter and cull through them whenever I wanted to. And for me, these are long projects oftentimes uh, or projects that overlap. So I'll reach back into old projects often to include into newer projects. So this isn't like a wedding photographer or something like that where maybe it's self-contained one, one event, one, uh, one project might have its own database or own folder and that's it. I've been collecting folders of photo shoots over many, many years. I'll go out and shoot street photography and put that in the folder of the day, month, and year, and so on and so forth. So I've gathered a lot of folders, a lot of photos, and for Capture One and Lightroom, it took up a lot of uh, took up a lot of resources for it to index all that, create thumbnails for all that, and for me to go through it. I was asking a lot of those applications, and I realized that, and therefore I knew I'd be asking a lot of whatever application I'd find on Linux. Organizing and filtering was number one. Number two was editing my photos. I don't do a lot of compositing, and when I do. That's usually a separate application than the main one I used. On Mac, it was Photoshop and then Affinity Photo. But for the most part, I was doing a lot of my editing in Lightroom or Capture One. Uh, everything I do kind of mi mimics a, a film photography workflow, stuff I would edit, stuff I would do like in the darkroom. So Capture One and Lightroom were more than sufficient for that. So that's kind of what I'm looking to replace on here. The third area where I needed to figure out is I knew would probably be the biggest obstacle and that's printing and not necessarily like just being able to work with the printer. Uh, my, I knew my, the computer could see the printer, no problem, but it's work. It's getting the, the results that I want since I know that there was, there wasn't the Epson software that I use from an Epson printer. There wasn't a Linux version of that. So printing was a big question mark for me. Uh, so, since that last video I made, I've been concentrating a lot on Darktable. It took me a bit, but I basically rebuilt that library I had on my Mac into Darktable. And I say it took me a bit because I had to move it from one drive. I had to move it from a Mac formatted drive to this for this new this drive that I formatted for Linux. And then on top of that, I had to import it all into Darktable. But once I did that, I was actually pl pleasantly surprised on how well Darktable has handled the library. Now let me show you kind of what I'm working with. On the left side here, if I'm in the if I'm in the light table module or light table section, I won't go over every, I won't do a dark table tour of this video, but I just want to kind of show you what I've been impressed with so far and maybe with some of my challenges. So on the left side of the screen, there is uh, a directory that I can point to different drives, different folders and whatnot. And basically on my external USB drive, I have a CB photo library folder. The organization method I use is relatively simple. I don't try to overcomplicate things. It's month, day, it's day, month, year, and that's it. But I've gathered up a whole bunch. But but I've been really happy with the way Darktable has handled that many fold the way that it's handled that many folders, that many pictures. And uh, the only one, one of the only bottlenecks in my workflow so far has been the drive I put it on. It's nothing that Darktable is doing wrong, or even necessarily my computer itself. I, the, I, I've uh, I have it on a drive that's not super fast. So eventually, I'll fix that part of my workflow. But for now, we're working good with this, and I can treat my library pretty much exactly how I would in Lightroom or Capture One where I can have all my pictures over here. I can filter through them. I can give them tags and metadata. 
all that stuff. And then without leaving the application, I can do some edits in here. And this is where we talk about the editing part. Like I said, for me, the editing part is relatively simple, um, meaning that I, I, I just use a variation of the basic tools I don't, I rarely do any compositing or whatnot. I'll do he, healing. And if I'm, you know, healing a, a little, uh, a hot pixel or dust, if I'm shooting film or something like that, I will use those healing brush tools, but I don't do anything super advanced. So I can, uh, uh, I can get by with some of these basic tools, but let me sh show you some of the, t the, the tools in here that I really like just to give you a little taste, a little preview. I don't want to make this video super long, but let's pretend I'm going to take this video and make a black and white version in the style of what I like to shoot. Uh, oftentimes I will do a quick straightening by right clicking and straightening it out and cropping and straightening. I oftentimes will do right away because I know pretty much for the most part, most of the stuff I print or post online is going to be a four by five ratio. Um, I will vary it from that a little bit here and there, but so I get those, I get that done. I'll check overall exposure. And for this, for this shot, it's not, it's at a decent starting point. So I'll leave it here. And the next thing I'll do is convert it to black and white. There's like three or four different ways you can convert images to black and white in dark table. And depending on which video you watch, they'll show you a different way. Uh, I'm going to use the color cal calibration tool and I'm not going to make a new instance. I'll just use the instance that's here. I'll pick one of the presets to start off with. It has a few um, Ilford presets and a Fuji Acros preset, which is pretty cool. And then usually what I'll do next is um, pick a tool t for me to adjust the contrast to increase the drama, to add some interest to it. Uh, for this one, let's try the tone equalizer. Uh, this is a new tool to me in, in dark table and I won't go into exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, but and maybe I'll make a specific video on some of these modules, but cause I want to just give you an overview of how dark table is working well for me. So I'll use this tone equalizer to add contrast to this image and how I like to do. So I'm going to start off with kind of seeing where everything lands in the tone tonal range. So the side of this bus is not quite the middle and where are we at on the ground? That's one of the higher, actually one of the higher the higher exposed elements in this image. So I'm going to start by kind of keeping that part the same and start dragging down everything below that and just see, see what we're looking like here. So basically I found this part of the ground. I figured I'm going to kind of keep that exposed as uh, close to as, as is as possible. And then start pulling things down. The only thing I don't like is the sky is kind of starting to get maybe too dark. So let's see where that sits. All right. Just for sake of speed, I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to add some, uh, contrast to this, which this tool, local contrast adds contrast, but it also kind of gives, um, a little dehazing vibe to it. Let's see what I can get here. I increased, increase the local contrast just a little bit. It's kind of clarity. It's kind of a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehazing tool in, in Lightroom in capture one. And so I usually bounce between this local contrast tool and the diffuse and sharpen tool, I think. Uh, but local lately, this local contrast tool has been really cool. So I'll just leave that there for now. I won't go too crazy. And let's just say if I'm almost done, the last thing I'll usually do is add some sort of vignette or exposure mask. And I just want to really concentrate on that bus window. So I'll bring it in and increase the feathering and let's see how dramatic we can go. That's actually kind of cool. Now that's pretty dramatic. Actually, if I look at that, I'll increase the feathering a little bit more. Um, now the, uh, the simple explanation of what's going on over here with the, um, with the modules is that this one that looks like a power button is the active modules that you have on that image. 
Now, by default, as soon as you open a raw file, Darktable adds a handful of those modules. It's, it's already applied some of them to process the raw image. And you can go within that and change a couple details like uh, the white balance, uh, the, the initial white balance from the raw image, the demo, demosaic options and things like that. But beyond about the exposure module, well, actually there's a, there's a couple other ones in there, but you'll see the modules that I've added. I've added tone equalizer, crop, uh, local contrast, vignetting, and then I left color calibration, but I used it for a different purpose convert to convert it to black and white. Now, once I have that photo edited, I can give it a color label, give it stars, I can give it metadata for me to reference later. And that's kind of what I have been doing is basically once once a photo is edited and I think, okay, it's, it's edited, it's good enough to either print or add to a folder for me to look through later, I'll give it a green label. And you can see here in the bottom right, the label's green and I can go up here and filter by the color labels or color tags. So let's say that I'm happy with all my edits, everything looks good, and I want to do a, I want to do a print, make even make a test print. They do, just like Lightroom, there is a print section or print module. I haven't really tried to print color yet. I haven't kicked the tires on that yet. Since I'm printing black and white, I can get away with not having to worry about ICC profiles for the paper that I'm printing on. Um, I imagine if I'm just going to print to the Epson branded paper, I would probably be fine and I will do tests and I will follow up with you. But for now, I have just printed black and white, but those experiments have gone pretty well. Um, I printed like this image here on uh, Hanimula Photo uh, Brida, I think is the paper I printed this on. And this one as well. So, so far so good in terms of what Darktable is capable of in terms of printing. Like I said, I haven't done color prints yet, but I will kick the tire on that and show you guys the results from that. So Darktable has checked most of the boxes for me and what I look for in a photo application. The cool thing is in those three areas I've talked about, organizing and filtering, editing and printing, as of right now, it's checked all three of those. I'm doing all three of those for black and whites at least. Uh, I'll have to figure out the color part soon. But I'm super, super happy. And the cool thing is obviously this is free and open source software. So once I learn it, invest time in it, and there's no reason for me to switch from it. Uh, the only negative I see, and this is really is a negative, it's just something that um, I'm going to keep in mind, is that I do want to give Digicam a chance in terms of being the filtering and organizing application. I think it doesn't do editing within that, I don't think, but I want to try that one out. I, I need, do need to give Raw Therapy a fair shot. I haven't given it a fair shot. I've, I've only kicked the tires on the Mac version, not the Linux version, and that was a long time ago. So I got to try some of these things just to make sure I'm giving you like a fair and balanced like take on this on the software choices but I know a lot of people out there are ditching Adobe thinking about ditching Adobe tired of Windows tired of Mac all these things and are looking for alternatives that make you feel like you're not compromising a lot whenever you make a huge switch you're going to be compromising something even if it's just your comfort for a little bit but this one, I feel like for me specifically, in my use case, my compromises are super, super small, or at least a minimum. If by some chance you've come to this video and are not familiar with Darktable, I invite you to check it out. The current version is 4.8, which is what I'm using now. Uh, it's a fantastic application. It's free, so there's no money lost if you don't like it. But uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. I need to do some more. I need to spend more time with it so I can do more thorough like tutorials and talk about it with more with more experience, so I can show you some more details and whatnot. 
But I think that's pretty much it for now. I kind of wanted to give you a success story on, on this journey that I found the, the photo app that I've been looking for. It's Dark Table. So thanks again, as always, guys. I invite you to join the Patreon. I'm trying to build that community, still figuring out all the, 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 the membership benefits and whatnot. But I'm definitely going to do uh, credits at the end of videos for a certain tier of Patreon subscribers. So keep an eye on that if you want your name permanently on some of these videos join the patreon look for that membership tier and i appreciate every one of you as always guys i'll talk to you soon